Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of John Amell's Archives. Now, I've made several editions of this video and they're all running way too long. So if it seems like I'm talking really fast in this video or I'm hitting my points kind of quickly, it's probably because I am. Uh, really quickly, I wanted to do a wrestling video because I haven't done one since last week and it's something that I am committed to doing. I do have some big news, however. And the big news is that I just got off the phone with Public Access Philadelphia. Uh, I'm going to be doing a Public Access cable television show, so I won't be getting paid for it. I'm not anything big time, but I do need this to increase my exposure to get where I want to be. It's going to be Channel 66 on Comcast and 28 on the other service, whatever that is. Uh, so stick with me, and I'll get, keep you guys updated. Um, also, check out the videos that I've been posting this entire week. I got some interviews at Hermosa Beach, got some interviews in Hollywood, John Amell's archives raids the porn convention, so it's all real fun stuff, it's uh, really, really funny stuff, and hopefully it's, it's uh, like I said, kind of like the platform of where I'm going with the show in the upcoming uh, month or two, hopefully it'll be month. So, now, on to my video, which is the top 10 wrestlers of all time. Now, how did I come up with the top 10 wrestler list of all time? Well, it's easy. We based it on these simple criterias. Longevity, how long have they been in the ring? How long has their career been in existence for? Charisma, ability in the ring, and mic work. So not only how good of a wrestler are they, but how good are they on the microphone. Drawing power and great matches. So without any further ado, let's get right down to number 10 on the list. Number 10 on the list is your boy because he's not mine, but I had to include him because he does meet all the criteria on this list. And by the way, this isn't my favorite wrestlers of all time. This is simply the top 10 best. So at number 10, without any further ado, Triple H. Now, Triple H has to get a spot on the list, unfortunately, because in almost every category, he's a B plus at least all the way around or an 8.5. Longevity, a 10. Charisma, an 8.5 or a 9. At his heyday with The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, maybe a little bit higher. And that's probably the, the, the issue with Triple H, is that his career is constantly compared to those other two. He'll never be those other two, but he had a great run. Uh, great matches. He, he gets uh, an 8.5. Drawing power, 8.5. 8.5, B pluses across the board, maybe some A minuses. Triple H is the 10th best wrestler of all time. Number 9 comes in the list, is the only other WCW wrestler on my list, and the only reason why this guy is not number one or number two or number three is because he never signed with the WWF, and that is Sting. Now, maybe it would have been different if the WCW won the war, but they didn't. The WWF won the war, and unfortunately for Sting, never competing in the big time really held him back on my top ten all-time list. The fact that we've never seen Sting wrestle Steve Austin or wrestle... Um, the Rock or the fact that he's not in the Hall of Fame or the fact that he has no interaction with the WWF speaks volumes about the Stinger because unfortunately he gets like 9.5s or 10s across the board. Uh, so he would be 1, one 2, or 3. But unfortunately he never went to the WWF. Number 8, Hulk Hogan. So Hulk Hogan, I was a Hulkamaniac growing up. Um, I Obviously on drawing power, he is the biggest draw of all time. But looking back, you know, I gave him a nod because when I was watching these matches, I was five years old. You look back at Hulk Hogan's career now, didn't have a lot of great matches. That kind of brought him down on the list big time. While Ric Flair and the other federation, oops, was having like phenomenal bounce with Sting and um, Ricky Steamboat and Dusty Rhodes. You know, Hulk Hogan was thrashing Mr. Perfect and ravishing Rick Rude. So even though I loved it as a kid, looking back on it now, that's why you're number eight on the list. Number seven on the list. Hulk Hogan's tag team partner, longtime enemy, Randy Macho Man Savage. Uh, Randy Macho Man Savage, probably my favorite all-time wrestler. Uh, as far as longevity, he gets a, a 9. The only reason why he wouldn't get a 10 is because he didn't really wrap up his career the right way. Charisma, a, a 9-5. Not quite at the Stone Cold Steve Austin or the Rock level, but right there. Mike Work, ooh, yeah. Everybody loved the, the Macho Man, even though he didn't make a lot of sense. 9-9-5. Nine, nine, Ability in the ring was probably a 10. His matches with Ricky Steamboat, Ric Flair, uh, even Hulk Hogan were some of the greatest of all time. Uh, and great matches were, were a 9-5 or a 10. 
Yeah, a great career, too. It lasted in the WCW. So, number six will probably disappoint a lot of you youngsters, but it's going to be The Undertaker. Primarily because when I look at this list and I scratch my head, I could not give The Undertaker the nod over The Rock or Stone Cold Steve Austin. And the main reason why I couldn't is because The Rock and, the, and Steve Austin were both the main event during the whole time all three of them were in the company. And even though The Undertaker had beats them on several several other things like longevity, no one's been more loyal or has had a better WWF career than The Undertaker. Still, at the end of the day, he wasn't better than The Rock and he wasn't better than Steve Austin. But he did have a great career. He did have some great matches. He also had some not-so-great matches. You know, when you put him out there with Sid Vicious and, and King Kong Bundy, uh, drawing power, he gets like a 9-5. Mic work, probably a 9. Ability, probably an 8-5 or a 9. So he's kind of down there a couple notches. Anyway, The Rock will get number 5. So The Rock probably would be number 1 or 2. Easily the most electrifying man on this list. The, the most charismatic on this list. Obviously, he's an A-list Hollywood star. The reason why The Rock is not number one is because his career basically spanned from 1997 to 2003. Uh, John Cena, pound for pound, has wrestled a lot more matches than The Rock. Uh, now he's come back, so hopefully he could put a nice cap on that and we could bump him up several spots on this list. But as of right now, because of this short duration, even though there's nobody better on the mic of, at all time than The Rock, uh, his matches were some of the best. Nobody more charismatic, nobody bigger draw other than The Hulkster. Uh, the Rock suffers big time in longevity, and that's why he's number five, and Stone Cold Steve Austin is number four, because I had to give Stone Cold a nod over The Rock for duration, longevity, busting his ass. You know, Steve Austin has been around since the uh, late 80s, early 90s with the Hollywood Blondes. Really, really paid his dues. The Rock kind of walked into the situation with being uh, his father, you know, being a, a WWF wrestler. He was only uh, in the indie scene for one year where Steve Austin was years and years and years and years paying his dues. Uh, Austin on the mic is a, is a 10. Uh, third best on the mic of all time behind The Rock and my other guy. Drawing power, 10. Great matches, 10. Uh, longevity was affected a little bit, probably an 8. Obviously, we got cut five years short of Steve Austin's career because Owen Hart dropped him on his head, uh, which is all in another video. Please watch that. So, number three might surprise some of you. Um, I am a little bit biased here because I love the guy's match, and that's Brett the Hitman Hart. Uh, every match, every show Brett the Hitman Hart was on, he was the main event. Um, if not the real main event, he stole the show. For example, SummerSlam 92. The main event wasn't Bret Hart versus Davey Boy Smith, but now the WWF acts like it was, even though it was the last... I don't consider the last show to go on the main event, by the way. I consider the show that they advertise all over the place the main event. So Bret Hart, whether it was wrestling Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 12, whether he was wrestling the Bulldog at SummerSlam, whether he was, do, you know, even his matches against The Undertaker, uh, you know, whether he was wrestling Diesel at the Survivor Series, and his matches even with Diesel were great. He was never involved in a bad match. Even his match, even his matches, his worst matches were still, uh, you know, 8.5s. The guy threw up five-star matches like they were going out of style, uh, really paid his dues, um, came a long way, on the microphone wasn't that good, you know, in the 80s. By the 90s, you know, he was up to an eight, about a solid 8 on the microphone. Um, unfortunately, drawing power held him back a little bit. He probably lacked a little bit, although he was the biggest draw in Canada of all time. And longevity was affected a little bit because, as you guys know, Goldberg ended his career with a careless mule kick where we would have had five more years of Austin and Bret Hart. Um, careless, careless. So, number two of all time, as you guys probably knew, uh, the nature boy, Ric Flair. Shouldn't really surprise many of you. Woo! Uh, Ric Flair is pretty much a 10 across the board uh, with everything. Um, Ric Flair gets a 10 in longevity. He actually gets a 15 in longevity. He needs to go away. As much as I wanted to hold him back for tarnishing his career, I couldn't because he's had such a great career. Um, you know, charisma was a 10. Ability in the ring is a, is is a 10 or a 9.5 maybe. Maybe he maybe Bret Hart's a little bit better than him. Mike Work was a 10, second best of all time, slightly behind The Rock. Drawing Power was a 10. He was selling out the NWA and the WCW for years and years and years and years. And great matches, he was a 10. Uh, Ric Flair, in, in no matter who he wrestled, it could have been dust, you know fat Dusty Rhodes or skinny or small you know Ronnie Garvin. Ric Flair just had 
great matches across the board. Some of his matches with Ricky Steamboat were the greatest of all time. Uh, with at Music City Showdown in 1989, um, his matches with uh, Sting at the Clash of Champions and the Great American Bash were phenomenal. He even made people like Lex Luger look really good. Like he would have an eight, an, an eight, you know, four star match with Lex Luger, which is really hard to do. So. You know, I wish Ric Flair would go away because he's kind of tarnishing his legacy, but there is no denying that Ric Flair is the probably the greatest wrestler of all time, if not for number one, our guy, Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels. Now, I'm not the biggest Shawn Michaels fan, but there is no denying that Shawn Michaels has to be the greatest wrestler of all time. Started his career in 85 as the Rockers. I mean, it went on to last year, so you do the math. Um... Shawn Michaels' career was phenomenal, man. Like, yes, he was a little bit of an asshole during his first run. He didn't like to do the job a lot. Uh, you know, the, apparently the backstage word is that they wanted Vader to win the title at SummerSlam '96. You know, but he every if you go to Pro Wrestling Illustrate, Shawn Michaels won Match of the Year probably ten times. Every year that he's nominated, Shawn Michaels won Match of the Year, whether it was against Bret Hart. Whether it was against Sid Vicious, Kevin Nash, uh, you know, whoever, uh, uh, Steve Austin, whoever Shawn Michaels was in the ring with uh, today and yesterday. Now, you know, he came back and had matches at WrestleMania with Kurt Angle and Chris Jericho and John Cena. And his matches are, are just five star after five star after five star. And when they say the match with Ric Flair, obviously, and when they say... Mr. Main Event, Shawn Michaels is definitely the main event. Longevity, he gets a 10. Charisma, probably 9.5. He's probably not there with Stone Cold or The Rock. Not any more than 9.5, more so in the 90s. But ability and mic work, ability is a 10. Mic work could be like a 9, 9.5. Drawing power back in the day was a 10. Great matches is a 12. So that Shawn Michaels gets the nod over Ric Flair because his matches were so different. Ric Flair was a little bit more, more routine. In other words, Ric Flair would do that little spin over the top rope and then get body slammed and do the chop in the corner. Shawn Michaels would mix it up a little bit a little bit better for me. Same with Bret Hart when you compare him to Ric Flair. Uh, so that's my top 10 wrestlers of all time. Once again, to recap my list, at number 10, you have Triple H. Nine is Sting. Eight is Hulk Hogan. Seven, Randy Savage. Six, The Undertaker. Five is The Rock. Four, Steve Austin. Three, Bret Hart. Two, Ric Flair. And the greatest wrestler on my list of all time, which is the only list that matters, is Shawn Michaels. This is John Ammo. I will be back. Please keep, keep checking out my channels this week because I'll be uploading more footage, both old and new, in my attempt to thrust forward with my show. Thanks for watching.